Do you want to add screencast keys to Blender 3D? Adding screencast keys to Blender can make your 3D tutorials better as it allows your viewers to see the exact key presses and mouse movements. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to download and install screencast keys add-on for Blender 3D. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the web browser. I'm gonna head over to GitHub on this specific page. So I'll put a link to this page in the YouTube description. When you scroll down this page, you'll see there's an option to download the latest release. So go to the release page here and you'll see different versions of screencast keys, right? All these different versions. If you're using older versions of Blender, like Blender 2.91 or Blender 2.92 or even older versions, then you can download the right version for your version of software. We're gonna be downloading this for Blender 3, so we're gonna use the most recent version, which was only updated five days ago. Let's go ahead and click on this zip file here, screencastkeys.zip. So when we click on that, we will go ahead and open up this folder. And inside this folder, we'll just go ahead and drag and drop this zip file. So we can close the web browser. And remember, I'll put a link to this website in the YouTube description so you can access it quite easily. And we can go ahead and close this folder and open up Blender 3D. Let's go ahead and click on General here. And when we click on General, we wanna to go to Edit Preferences. And inside Preferences, we wanna to go to the Add-on tab here and then click Install. And then we want to go to my desktop or wherever you save your file and select that zip file and click install add-on and then we need to tick this off and then we can close it now to access screencast keys you need to press the letter n on your keyboard so the letter n for november n and that will open up this side tab here and you can see screencast is able to be selected here so if we turn it on, we'll see a little mouse down here and when we press Shift and A, for example, it will say Shift and A. But you can see it's quite hard to see. It's not that legible. So we can actually update these settings and all the settings that I'm gonna go through, I'll put them in the YouTube description. So if you check the YouTube description, all of these same settings, you'll find them there. So the first one is I don't really wanna change the colors. I'm gonna make it like an orange color, something like this. So it's not green, it's not no, it's not like this green color, it's not this red color, I wanna make it like this orange color. But you can choose whichever color you like. I'm not gonna put a shadow on there, I don't really want a shadow and I don't want a background behind it because I don't think that's very good. But in the font size, I'm gonna set the font size to 28. I want this to be much bigger. The font sizes are quite small. Now when I press Shift or I press Shift and A, you can see the font sizes are nice and big and that would be good for a tutorial so people can see those presses quite clearly. The margin I'm gonna leave it at zero, but you can add margin if you want. That's like the gap between the mouse and the text and stuff. So if you wanna add a margin, you can do that, but I always leave that at zero. The line thickness is the thickness of the mouse. So I like to just leave this as one pixel or one, one setting, just have a nice thin around edge around the mouse, right? I don't want it to be too thick. And then the actual mouse size, I set it to 64 here. So I'm gonna set it to 64, so it's much larger. Now when we press Shift and A, we can see everything's quite clear. And if we left click or right click, we can see all of the actions being displayed. And when we hold down the left mouse button, we can see that it's showing um, the, the, the key presses there, right? So when we click on an object, press G to grab it. And then we, if we were to move it, we can move it around and we can press escape and it will show all of those functions here, what we're pressing. Uh, the region, I normally just leave this as a set to, or the, ob the origin, I normally just set it to region. You can click set region and then click down here and it will move the mouse cursor over to this side. You can click set region, move it right to the edge here and it will place it right on the edge. Click it again one more time, move into the, the center, more inside of the screen and you click here and it will be placed here. And there are other options in here. Uh, let's just escape that. In the drop down, there's like area. I'm not really played around with these settings too much to be fair, but like there's window options. But it just makes sense. Leave it on region and it places it in a good position, I believe, right? Then you can go ahead and set the alignment. So you want it to be left aligned, centered, so you can center it if you want. I'm not sure why you do that, but, um, or you can right align it. Maybe you want it on the right side, possibly. But I think left side down here is the best position for it. Now with the um, offset, normally I set this to four. So the X offset, I set it to four, and then the Y offset, I set it to 22. So it's just a little bit lower, but that's maybe that's a little bit too low. So let's maybe bring it up a bit. Let's set it to like, maybe, I don't know, let's say 70, I think is a good number. So I'm gonna update that in my document 
and we'll leave it at around 70 position I think that's pretty good and then uh, delay time so normally I set this to like five seconds so we're, we've right now it's on default three seconds but if I press shift and a that text there will stay for five seconds right and then we've got the max events so normally I set this to 10 so if you perform a lot of different actions if you press um, let's say we click on an object we press G to grab it and then we press escape and then we press shift and a and then we add like a bezier or we press shift and a again all of these actions will be displayed in here and you'll have a stack of 10 of them so if you're doing lots of actions at the same time they'll display all 10 actions up to maybe up to 10 and they'll last for five seconds each action before continuing this tutorial it will be awesome if you can hit that like button you can also support my channel by simply subscribing and hitting the bell icon many thanks so that might be useful if people are seeing you do a lot of actions and you want to keep them on the screen for a period of time right and if we left click we'll see left mouse written there so when I hold down the left mouse button it will also highlight the left mouse button there as well so that's nice and then the same with the right click as well and then shift and a you can see when we hold down the shift key the control key or the alt key these are our main like hotkeys these ones get shown in this position here so if we keep going down um, basically repeat count I normally leave this as active so if I press um, shift and a then if I press it again it will say times two here rather if I untick this and press um, shift a and then press shift and a again and then shift and a again it will just repeat them here so I don't really like that I rather turn this on and if I press that shortcut key more than once it would just say times two here instead but that's up to you you can kind of experiment with that show mass events uh, let's see show mass events uh, we'll leave this as active and normally I'll leave it on the hold status this one here so if I left click and uh, hold down the mass button it's going to show it on the mass device itself as well so I like to do that um, if I press shift and a and if I actually add an object like plane something like this then um, let's just try and do event history let me just check one thing here uh, plane it's normally an option in here okay show last operator so let's go to um, hold status leave that on hold status and then turn on uh, show last operator and that basically will show what actions have been happening so if we were to go and do something like shift a and add a uv sphere or let's add a uv sphere it will show that down here and it will tell you the type it is so it's the label and the id name can you see that label and id name so when i do shift and a and if i add a cube uh, it will say that's the label and then that's the id name there so that's what that's doing experiment get events aggressively uh get events which have which have been dropped by i'm not really sure what this is it says uh it's experimental uh this may make blender unstable so let's untick that i've not used it before so i'm just going to untick it but that's it that's pretty much it right now if you press the letter n it will close if you press the letter n it will open you can turn it on and off by clicking this option up here so let's just do one thing i'm going to close down blender I'm going to say don't save and I'm going to load it up again and all the settings that we set are memorized so if I click general but you'll see the, the screencast keys is not showing here you have to turn it on every time you load up blender so you press the letter n go to the screencast keys, key, uh, screencast keys tab and then tick this and then press the letter n to close it and then you're good to go you can click anything you can grab stuff and do whatever you need to do so if you're not familiar with blender you've never really used it before maybe you just come across this tutorial um i've got lots of tutorials on blender i've done lots of stuff with blender um on my youtube channel you can find lots of tutorials on a wide range of subjects so if i quickly show you that if you open up the web browser you can go to my youtube channel and if you click on playlists over here and if you scroll right down to the bottom it might not actually be at the bottom anymore because when i put this tutorial out it might show at the very top but you can see blender screencast keys about 160 odd tutorials there so i'll put a link to this playlist in the youtube description if you want to learn um, maybe some skills in blender that you're not really familiar with then um, you can go ahead and follow some tutorials here as well okay let's go ahead and minimize this and we'll close down blender okay so that's the end of this video tutorial i hope you found it useful 
don't forget to check out my YouTube channel where you can find over 750 free video tutorials on a wide range of software applications. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.